everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 30, so I'm going to be sharing the 2022 book releases that I cannot wait for. So we are at the second to last day of Bookmas. I'm pretty sure I got this right because I keep on getting this one mixed up with my end of the year Q&A, which I think in that video I called it Bookmas Day 30, but that's actually going to be Bookmas Day 29. So like struggles, but it's fine. We are persevering. It really does not matter. But today I'm going to be talking specifically about new releases that I am excited for. So not all the new releases. If you wanted to hear about some more new releases, you can watch Bookmas Day 27, where I showed all the books that I pre-ordered. I gave like a really quick synopsis, but you can get the gist of what they are about. Today I'll be delving deeper into the ones that I really Really cannot wait for. So before we get into it, don't forget to click that subscribe button and then click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post. I have been posting a new video every single day for the entire month of December, but that's almost over. But I will be posting two to three times a week in the new year, so there will still be lots of new content coming your way. I will also have the Bookmas playlist linked down below in case you guys have fallen behind, as well as Bookmas Day 29. As I mentioned, yesterday's video was an end of the year Q&A, so I'll have that down below for you guys as well. But without further ado, let's get into it. I have a really solid list here on my phone. Like I tried to keep it short, but then it just kept on getting longer and longer and longer. So it is quite long, but I'm really excited for all the books on here. So the first book that I wanted to talk about is Zyla and Kai by Christina Forrest. Christina Forrest is the author of two books that I have read, Now That I Found You and why can't I think of it? I Want to Be Where You Are, I think is the other one. Yes, I Want to Be Where You Are and Now That I Found You. I read both of them last year and really liked them. So now that she has a new book coming out, I knew I had to get it. This is coming out on June 7th and it is about star-crossed lovers. Obviously the two main characters are Zyla and Kai. I feel like that's pretty obvious, but they are on a school trip to the Poconos Mountains and they are high school seniors. They run away together, leaving friends and family behind, which is really confusing to everyone because they used to be dating, but they broke up months ago as everyone thinks. So there's definitely a mysterious element there. The story is alternating between the past and the present and having the love story unfold between the two perspectives as well. So I usually really love that. I think it gives a very well faceted look at things, but this seems like, I don't know if it's a romance, but it seems like a contemporary unlike any others that I have read before. So it definitely is on my radar. Next is Tokyo Dreaming by Amiko Jean. This is coming out May 31st and I cannot wait for it because it is the sequel to Tokyo Ever After, which was one of my favorite books that I read in 2021. I loved it so much. It just like provided the perfect escapism that I was needing. It was an adorable romance. It's pretty much like the Princess Diaries, but with the Princess of Japan. She ends up finding out that her estranged father is the Prince of Japan, and she just is swept up in this whole world and has a lovely romance along the way as well. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen to these characters. I would love to know more of the plot, but I'm kind of, I'm not reading it because I just want to go into it and see how I feel. Next is The Dream Runners by Shvita Thakrar. This one's coming out on June 28th, and this is also an author that I have read before. This is by the author of Star Daughter, which I read this past year and I did really like it. I had a couple of issues with it. I just feel like there were some things that could be fixed with like more experience writing. So now that she has another book coming out, I definitely had to pre-order it. This seems super cool. It's about this subterranean world where dream runners, which are human children who are freed of like all emotion and feeling and memories, but they go and they are harvesting dreams to feed like the subterranean people. This Lord has plans to use the dreams to end an ancient war. But when a dream harvest ends up going awry and they end up remembering life on earth, that obviously poses a lot of problems. I am just so interested in this. This once again, seems like a really unique read, unlike anything I've ever read before, but so intriguing. Next is The Sunbearer Trials by Aidan Thomas. Aidan Thomas is of course the author of Cemetery Boys, as well as Lost in the Neverwood, 
Neverwoods, but I didn't personally like Lost in the Neverwoods. I didn't end up finishing it, but I do definitely want to read more from this author because I think they're really talented. I did love their writing. That wasn't the issue with Lost in the Neverwoods for me. This story is actually based in Mexican folklore, which is super cool. In each decade, the sun's power needs to be replenished, and there are these trials that the Seminos, I believe, or semi semi dios semi dioses have to go through. So there's 10 of them that are selected by Sol, the god of the sun himself. The main character is the trans son of the goddess of birds, and he is much more worried for others in this trial, and that's because the winner will actually be sacrificed to protect the people. So this definitely seems like a very high stakes situation. It seems really interesting. I love the fact that it is based in Mexican folklore. That seems so cool, and I really do enjoy Aiden Thomas's writing, so I want to read more by them. Next is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This is coming out May 3rd, and I am so excited for it. Emily Henry has two books that, well, actually she has another YA book that I've read, but two adult books that I've read, and I have loved both of them so far. So The People We Meet on Vacation is her one from 2021, and then in 2020, she came out with Beach Read. Now is Book Lovers. So she definitely has a niche in the adult romance community. She writes about writing and books, and I love that. To say my expectations for book lovers are sky high is an understatement. I like, I'm trying to lower them just because I don't want to be let down, but I've had such a good time with reading her other books so far that I feel like I'm going to love this one, and I really hope that I do. This is about a literary agent who agrees to go on a month long trip with her little sister who wants her to have a small town transformation and become the heroine in her own story. So kind of like Hallmark movie vibes there. But actually while she's there, she ends up bumping into a brutish book editor from back in the city. And she ends up being faced with the decision of if changing her entire life is worth it for love. So very relatable, but I st I'm so excited for this. Actually, Christina Lauren, they are also coming out with a new adult romance, but I hadn't seen anything about it when I was looking up the books for this. Since then, they have released the cover. I think it's Wilder at Heart, but I'm definitely really looking forward to that one too. Next is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. I love whimsical reads, and this seems like exactly what that's going to be. This is coming out on April 5th, and it is about this hotel, and this hotel is world renowned for its magic, and one of its magical things is that it can show up in a new place every morning. So kind of like the night circus. The main character of this book is dreaming of something new for herself and her sister. They are just barely scraping by. So they actually end up going to the Hotel Magnifique. They can't afford to actually go and stay there as guests. So they go to interview to be staff members, which I thought initially that they were interviewing the staff members and was kind of confused, but then I clarified that, so I think in another video I explained it incorrectly. But they are interviewing to be staff members, and they end up getting hired and discover that they can't leave. Like, it's a whole different world than they were ever expecting. Definitely getting Carval vibes, the night circus, all of those good things that I love the vibes of, so I'm really looking forward to this. Next is I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This is coming out on May 3rd, and Casey McQuiston is the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue, as well as One Last Stop, which came out in 20. 2021 that I still need to read because classic. This book actually is a YA story though. So it follows Chloe Green and she is so close to winning. She is kept going by the fact that she's very close to being valedictorian. Her rival is prom queen Shara Wheeler and Shara ends up actually kissing her and then completely disappearing. So obviously that leaves her a little bit shook. So she takes off on this furious hunt to try and find answers. Next is I Must Betray You by Rudis Apetis, which I did not know that Rudis Apetis was coming out with a new book. And then when I found out, I was like, so excited, like so incredibly excited. Now, this book is actually set in Romania, and one of the things that makes me love Rudis Petty's historical fiction is that it's always a different time period and a different side of the story that I haven't heard before, which just makes it like that much better. So in this case, we are following in Romania in 1989, and the communist regime is crumbling, and the main character ends up being approached by the secret police and being blackmailed to be an informant. So he has to decide whether he's going to use this position to actually like betray his friends or if he's going to use it 
to save them. He actually ends up risking everything to join the revolution and reveal the truth of one of the most brutal dictatorships in Eastern Europe. So I don't know a lot about that time period. I know a little bit, but it's definitely one that I would love to know more about and be more educated on. And I just like, I've been blown away by all of Rudis Petty's books. So I definitely need one. And I can't remember if I said when this one is coming out, but it's coming out on February 1st, just in case I didn't say it. Next is Echoes and Empires by Morgan Rhodes. So Morgan Rhodes is the author of Falling Kingdoms and A Book of Spirits and Thieves. And I enjoyed Falling Kingdoms, but I really liked A Book of Spirits and Thieves. And she hasn't come out with a new book in a while. So I was really excited to see that she had something else. She is a Canadian author and this book is coming out on January 4th. So it's coming out quite soon. It's set in this world where magic is rare, illegal, and deadly. The main character ends up getting caught up in a robbery gone wrong and then is infected with magic. So it's almost like it's like a plague, which I've never seen magic dealt with like that, I don't think. So she really wants to get this magic out, obviously, and she ends up being approached by a wanted criminal who agrees to help her to extract the magic in exchange for having the magic itself. Definitely seems like a very dangerous situation, but... We'll see how it plays out. Next is An Arrow to the Moon by Emily X. R. Pan. I feel like so many authors that like, I've read one thing by them or they haven't been writing in a while are coming out with a new book in 2022, which has me so excited. So Emily X. R. Pan is the author of The Astonishing Color of After, which I absolutely loved. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And this book is quite different than An Astonishing Color of After. It's more fantastical. This is coming out on April 12th and it's actually a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Me Chinese mythology. Hunter is haunted by his family's past mistakes, but is kept from fleeing by his little brother. Luna dreads the future and the expectations of her parents. And the two of them end up meeting and having to navigate their family secrets together. So I don't actually know if this one's fantastical. I think the Romeo and Juliet thing just made me think that it was, but it might be like the astonishing color of after had a little fantastical element to it. So it might be like that. Either way, I'm so excited to read it. Next is All My Rage by Saba Tahir. This is the first contemporary novel by Saba Tahir, the author of Ember in the Ashes. And I'm actually very behind on that series, but I will get caught up at some point, I promise. This one is coming out on March 1st and it's set in Pakistan. And then it follows a dreamer and a storyteller. So this part is set in the past in Pakistan. And that main character is newly married in an arranged match. That character's life is ruined by a tragedy and they end up coming to America. America for a fresh start. So now it's in California and you're following the descendants of the first character. It's best friends who are growing up as outcasts, but then they end up having a fight and that bond is destroyed and they are scrambling to be together again. I feel like that synopsis doesn't give me much to go off of, but like I'm not mad about that because I like to go into books not knowing much. So I would love to read this one and find out more of what it's about. Next is This Woven Kingdom by Tahara Mafi. This is Tahara Mafi's first young adult fantasy sort of thing other than Shatter Me, which I mean is more dystopian, but you know what I mean. She's written a couple of contemporaries, but hasn't written a new fantasy. So I'm very excited for this one. It's actually based in Persian mythology. So the main character acts as a servant for everyone, but she actually is the heir to an ancient Jinn kingdom that is hiding in plain sight. The crown prince has heard prophecies of the king dying, but never expects a servant girl or supposed servant girl to come and completely uproot everything. I'm so interested in the concept for this one and I really enjoy Tahara Mafi's writing and I would love to read more fantasy by her. Next is A Thousand Steps Into Night by Tracy Chi. Tracy Chi is the author of my absolute favorite book of 2021, We Are Not Free. I loved it and this is very different, but I still am so excited for it because like she really proved herself as a very talented writer and we are not free. This book is coming out March 1st and this is actually based in Japanese mythology. So it is the realm of Awara where gods, monsters, and humans actually exist side by side. There's an ordinary girl just trying to stay safe, but then she ends up being cursed and turning into a demon that will have a deadly touch. So she ends up embarking on a quest to try and reverse that curse. And that is the character that we are following. I actually have another fantasy by Tracy Chi that I really want to read, but I pretty much am just like, I'm gonna read anything by her at this point. Next is Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller. This is the sequel to Blade of Secrets. I don't have many sequels on this list this year, actually, either because, I mean, I don't really like sequels that much, so it's not often that I continue with series, 
but there just doesn't seem to be that many announced at least. Either way, this is coming out July 26th and it's actually the conclusion to Blade of Secrets. So it's just a duology, but I really enjoyed Blade of Secrets and would love to know more about these characters. Next is My Imaginary Mary by the Lady Janies, Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This one is coming out on August 2nd and this is actually following Mary Shelley, which is so cool. It is, you know, the authors of My Lady Jane, so they follow different famous Marys now. It seems to be going in a pattern though, because with the Jane series, the first one was about Lady Jane Grey, so it was Tudor era, and then the second one was about Jane Eyre. So it's definitely like it's following, you know, now we have a literary one again. So Mary Shelley is trying to live up to her parentage. She has inherited the mind of her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, but is right now living a very boring life above her father's bookstore. And she's just kind of waiting for an idea that is going to make her worthy of that parentage. It also follows Ada Lovelace, who is the daughter of Lord Byron. However, she has a passion for mechanical engineering and that sort of thing, not the arts, but men keep on claiming her ideas as their own. So the two of them end up connecting. They are both like brilliant minds and they end up actually, here's the twist that is usual of these series. They find out that they are the children of two of the most powerful Fae. So I just am so intrigued by this. It sounds amazing and I can't wait for it. Next is The Rumor Game by Danielle Clayton and Sona Chirai Potra. This is the next book by the authors of Tiny Pretty Things, which like totally blew my mind. And this next one is coming out March 1st and it actually is set at a DC school for the children of DC's elite. And it's pretty much a story that's showing how rumors can like ruin and change everything on a dime. So I'm kind of expecting something pretty similar to Tiny Pretty Things, but I enjoyed that, so I'm not mad about it. Next is Set On You by Amy Lee. This is coming out May 10th and this is actually, I've never read this author before and I think this is the only book <laughs> that I have on this list that is by an author I haven't read before, but it just seemed right up my alley. It's an adult romance, but it's actually following a curvy fitness influencer and I love the idea of that. So this guy, she has like an enemies to lovers sort of thing with because he keeps on stealing her favorite squat rack and I can so relate to that, honestly. There's one in like the corner at my gym that I love using because it just, it seems like it's in its own little place and no one can bug me. I just, I love that one. She has been through a recent breakup though and is using the gym to find solace and it's her place of power and positivity. The guy who keeps on stealing her squat rack is actually a new gym patron and he is a firefighter. So I'm super excited to see how the dynamic between them is gonna work out and everything. It just seems awesome. Next is Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. This is by the author of The Hazelwood, which I really liked. And this is coming out June 28th. And it's once again, a like then and now sort of story so it's set in the suburbs and Ivy Summer ends up starting with the mysterious appearance of this stranger in the middle of the road in the middle of the night and then that ends up setting up a lot of like a series of really strange events. In the city back then the main character turns 16 and with the help of her best friend and an older girl her gift of perception blooms into a fling with the supernatural so obviously the two things are going to combine I'm not really sure how but we'll see. I am very intrigued like I really like Melissa Albert's writing, so I wouldn't normally go for a book like this, but just because I enjoy her writing so much. It's definitely one that I want to get to. And the final book that I have here is actually another sequel, and that is Four Aunties and a Wedding by Jesse Q. Sutanto. This is coming out on March 29th, and it is actually the sequel to Dial A for Aunties, which was one of my favorite books that I read this year. So I'm not sure if it's a companion, because usually with romances, it's a companion, but this one, it doesn't seem like it is. But Either way, I'm definitely going to be reading it. Like her writing was incredible. So those are all of the books that I had to share with you guys today. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Tomorrow for Bookmas Day 31, I'm going to be sharing my 2022 TBR as well as some resolutions. So don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss that. And I will see you guys in a new video tomorrow. Bye.